welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Happy New Year and welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And on this episode of the podcast, number 178, we're going to be talking with Slicey Dicey, a YouTuber who needs no introduction. We're going to be speaking about the standout knives of 2020. I wanted to do a show kind of cataloging all of the standout knives of the year, but uh, kind of realizing I'm not the guy who's got the newest stuff as it comes out. I, I thought of, uh, well, who do I go to? on YouTube uh, to find out what the newest uh, of the new is, and that's Slicey. So I'm happy we're going to have him on the show today. We're going to talk about the standout knives of 2020. I have a few. He's got many, and uh, we're going to go through those. Uh, before we do, please call in to the listener line, 724-466-4487, and let us know what your standout knives of 2020 are and what you're excited about in this new year as it dawns. Um, I know that uh, Brian... Uh, you know him as Slacy. I know he's got some uh, uh, some knives in the offing that he's very excited about. I have a couple of prototypes here that um, I'm very excited about, and I can't wait to see what 2021 uh, has to offer. So without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Slacy Dicey. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase. And now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, or on a pillow, coaster, tote bag, coffee mug, water bottle, sticker, pen, or apron. And with COVID-19, you definitely need a don't take dull for an answer face covering. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie with your don't take dull for an answer merchandise. Get yours at www www.thenifejunkie.com forward slash dull. That's www.thenifejunkie.com forward slash dull. Brian, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. This hey. is your 2.0. Welcome. I got confused. I got confused with the ad there for a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's quite all right. Don't take dull for an answer wear. It's pretty, uh, it's, it's what everyone's going to be wearing this year. You got you got to sling that merch, yo. <laughs> That's right. So uh, before we get into what your uh, what the standout knives for 2020 are, uh, I want to I want to break the ice with a little pocket check, sir. What were you carrying today? Oh, I'm excited to show what I was carrying today because uh, I it took me a while to get this. They just made more of them. It's not really that hard to get. You can find it a few places now. But I got this knife, uh, Nick Stas Stas 23. Great, great channel loan this to me he would not sell it to me i was quite upset with him i tried to convince him that it was stolen by ninjas and he didn't buy it but they made some more and i'm doing some some other stuff with civilian wheat and i got a mini buster so, Ooh, that's a snacks knife right yeah i really i loved this thing so much uh when he loaned it to me and i like begged and pleaded for him to sell it to me and he would not do it and uh, yeah, I'm doing some uh, some stuff with Civivi, and I said, "Hey, do you can you get me a mini buster?" And Seth, their guy that you've seen the video, said, "No, I can't." And then the next day, he goes, "Oh wait, yeah, I can. I guess we're making more of them." So I know Knife Center has them right now. Again, um, honestly, related to the subject, if I'd have known they were making more of them, it might have been in my top ten of the year mm. uh, in one of my categories. But uh, I thought they were one and done, and I don't put stuff in my top 10 list that you can't possibly obtain but i also only put one from each manufacturer usually and i do the wee kite fin is a bit more significant than this so i probably still would have put the kite fin but uh i'd have had a good long think about this because for me this is best thing we made this year what is it about um about that buster design and then about snacks uh, the knife maker in general that's so unique and interesting so I know very little about Snex because he makes very few knives and they are like five digits usually. Um, but what's unique about them is, and I hope it's going to come across on camera. So the lock bar interface and the detent ball are one piece. See that little dot there? Yeah. So that's like kind of a pin with a detent ball on the end of it. 
And uh, what's cool about it is it's never like, it just drops. You don't have that, you know, on some knives you have a, where you have to get it past the detent ball before it'll drop. Mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't have that. And it has just a very unique feel. Like it kind of almost feels like a light detent, but it does fire reliably just about every time. You know, I can't, I can't shake it loose. But it's just, it's just a very unique feel, and I love the blade on it too. It's a it's a great blade shape, and it's mm -hmm. typical Wii. So I want to say it was sixteen thousandths behind the edge or something like that. So uh, um, and it just looks cool. I just like the I just like the look of it. So I was very happy to finally have one of my own. <clears throat> well, I I um, follow Snex on Instagram. I've, I have for years, and he goes into these phases where he'll be developing a knife. And you'll see in excruciating detail all of oh, the yeah. trial and error that he goes through um, engineering wise uh, to get that to get to get those knives. I know a lot of the time he'll or on a on a few models he built them without any hardware, you know, just completely kind of notching yeah. and fitting together. Yeah, they were just like a little titanium jigsaw puzzle of cool. Yeah, like a parlor yeah, trick. Yeah. Uh, I may be totally talking out my butt here, but I want to say. One of those went for twelve grand. Am I am I crazy on that? I thought it was a lot. I thought it was five I, digits. I think that that is um, not uh, outside the realm of possibility because he only makes about twelve of what he makes anyway. He he makes very small batches. Yeah. So uh, speaking of cool, I, I I have to show this off. This was my um, this is a knife I've been wanting for a long time. <laughs> And, and this, by the way, is not twelve thousand dollars. It's two ninety. So it's, oh, right. oh, so oh, I don't want people to think that I'm ro I'm rolling in it and rocking a twelve thousand dollar knife. So, well, that's way more reasonable. <laughs> My Patreon support would completely stop if everybody thought I had twelve thousand dollars to spend on it. <clears throat> so today I was carrying my birthday knife, which came from my wife. It's a uh, tactical. Uh, you can get it on Tactical Elements, but it's uh, Jason Knight. Uh, the ABS Master Smith. Uh, he was uh, a, a sort of uh, fill-in judge on Forged and Fire. That's how he came on my radar. But I've been um, following him ever since, and he's got this beautiful brand of sort of uh, of uh, Kukri meets Bowie uh, style blades that he forges. And then he did this uh, collaboration with Fox Knives, and uh, that's a that's a four and a quarter inch blade, and it feels it feels so reasonable though. When I pulled it out, I was almost like, when I first got it out of the box, <clears throat> I thought for sure it was going to be larger. But in measuring it, I was like, oh, no, that's over four inch. That's an over four inch blade. But I think that overall curve kind of puts it in a smaller footprint. So it seems less huge. It, but it, it's, it wasn't like closed, though. It looks like it would be very tall in the pocket, though. Oh, yeah, it's wide. It is, it yeah. is kind of wide in the pocket. And I am somewhat used to that. But it's thin, so you know how sometimes if something is wide this way but thin this way, it yeah. rides okay, and also vice versa. But if you have them both, it's kind of a nightmare. But uh, I carried this, that's and then something and, that used to really, yeah, that's something that used to really bother me that height in the pocket thing. But now I found that I just don't put anything else in that pocket. You know, so it just if I'm carrying a like I think the knife that convinced me of it, I really like the Manix Two XL. I loved that thing. Oh, yeah. And I just wanted to carry it, but it dominated my pocket. And then you just accept it. And you're like, well, I'm just not putting anything else in my right front pocket, I guess. You know, that's, and you can get by with one less pocket. <laughs> you know, it's fine. You can. And I think it's a, a good rule of thumb because, I mean, you put something else in there and that knife is going to receive some damage eventually, you know. So yeah, uh, the only other thing that goes in that pocket is um, my vape I because I'm a filthy, stupid vapor. So I'll put that in my right front pocket with my knife. But other than that, nothing else goes in there. OK, so, Brian, before we launch into your uh, list of standout knives for 2020, I want to show you this cool thing. Uh, this thing is a prototype thing um, from Mike Latham at Collector Knives uh, dot net. Oh, He's yeah. You, yeah, you remember this conversation. So this is the cheetah. Yeah. And and a cheetah is a traditional pattern that locks open and has a swing guard. And uh, obviously, this is a modernized version. And uh, I was, I'm at home, so I was carrying this today, you know, and not, not putting any use on it. But 
it is amazing how this swing guard has zero play in it. By the way, that's M390. And uh, this is going to be a sweet knife. You got the crown spine and all that stuff you expect from a fine Italian knife. <clears throat> Yeah. But what's really I, I don't normally is care. Nice. I don't normally care for knives without pocket clips, but I may make an exception for that one. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I like that swing guard; it's just unique. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. And and uh, I would love to see this with a clip point blade because traditionally I think that's how cheetahs came, but not for nothing. I think that's a beautifully shaped uh, spear point blade. So I feel uh, I feel honored to be uh, allowed to check out this prototype and and that is definitely a uh, a perk of of meeting meeting good knife folk you know yeah you need to uh you need to introduce me to him so that i can actually manage to buy a gec someday oh yeah oh my god so the <laughs> viper just came out the number 47 and uh yeah. that's that's i think probably the most coveted model and man, it uh, just today I looked on uh, I looked on all my favorite sites and sold out everywhere. You know, so yeah, I did. I, G, GEC is a brand that every one of them I touched, I loved. I'm not super into traditionals, but uh, but I like theirs. But they're so hard to get; it's one that I just gave up on. And I'm the guy who always apologizes for TRM and you know and Microtech and some of the other brands that are kind of hard to get. But uh, I guess I think it's I think I just gave up on getting GECs because I'm not a real huge traditional guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand the problems. I mean, especially the GECs have so much finishing involved in those things. Like it, there it's not a, it's never going to be a mass produced you know uh, kind of item. But I've just kind of given up on my ability to get one. <laughs> so because <laughs> I re I really wanted that that sausage one. Oh and yeah, the beer and sausage. I, 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 and they, it was released on like four sites at once, and they were still all gone. Now. Oh, yeah. I got this one from Mike, actually, Mike Latham. He had an extra one laying around and uh, sent it to me. And I, I, I love this thing. He kind of despises it because it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a made up hipster traditional knife, but I think yeah. it's cool. I think, I think it's, I think it's awesome, especially. And back when that was around, I still had like a big giant full beard. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I, like I really wanted that. Like when that was, when that was really because I did carry a beard comb in my pocket all the time. And uh, yeah, I just think that that's so cool. And I eat a lot of sausage, so <laughs> yeah. And I drink a lot of beer, so you know you can open up the beer, you can eat the sausage, comb the yeah. comb the crumbs out. Uh, you were talking about uh, accessibility, and uh, one of the big news items at the end of the year, of course, was Cold Steel being sold. Uh, to GSM, yeah. and uh, uh, a, a big reason Lynn Thompson cited was accessibility, especially with the popularity of the 8010 and how a lot of people wanted it, couldn't get it. I have only a few cold steels left that I still want, and today I, I did a panic buy, actually. I did a panic buy of the dressed-up <laughs> version of this knife, the the uh, the large Espada. I've always wanted I the I just, did the, I, I just did the opposite and shipped my shiny one out today. So, uh, really? but I sold it to, uh, I sold it to advanced knife, bro. Um, mostly just because I want to see the video. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, um, no, it's, I'm not, um, I don't know. I, I don't I'm trying to be diplomatic. I, I think even diplomatic, I'd want to swear. I don't get the accessibility thing because he said that he's saying the 8010 was hard to get a hold of. On a scale of one to 10 for knives, it's hard to get a hold of. The 8010 was like a 2.1. It was still pretty easy to get your hands on. You just had to wait a minute. Um, and I don't, if he just, if he's, a, he's not a young fella, if he just wanted to cash out, that's fine. I don't begrudge him at all. Yeah. But I don't know about, I know that we're both big Cold Steel fans. I don't feel good about this at all. And nothing they have said has made me feel any better. And no. And I, 
I know a couple people that I, I can't say what they said. It's not any of the usual suspects, but people who are there and they don't feel good about it either. So, I mean, I just don't know. Maybe it's going to be great. And I, I really, I've never wanted to be wrong more, you know, mm. about something. Uh, but it right now, it just gives me, I'm getting no good vibes at all. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but. Well, uh, you know, not good vibes ever when, uh, you know, when a brand you love sells like that. What is the uh, silver lining to me is a recent article uh, I saw. It was a release by GSM, and uh, they indicated that Lynn Thompson will still maintain uh, control of his own kind of uh, line of spears and machetes and swords. And that's what I care about. I don't want to see all that unique stuff go away, you know? So hopefully that happens. And, you know, I, I'm yeah. not going to, uh, I've had plenty of time to accumulate their goods and I'm not going to, I'm not going to cry too much, but, and like you said, the guy deserves a rest if he wants a rest. No, I mean, but. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I opened up my knife case, you know, and I was going to panic by it too. Like what, what do I need to get? And, I'm pretty happy with what I have. I have 11 of them. So I was, I was pretty happy with them. And I, I sold the, the Spot XL. But, and then I gave my brother-in-law my um, Counterpoint XL. Uh, but I have, you know, my Voyager Chris XL. I've got an 8010. I've got, you know, the American Lawman that I is a mascot for the channel. <laughs> and then I've got, you know, um, a code four. I've got, you know, a couple of older XHP ones. Like I'm pretty happy what I have. and I didn't buy anything. Um, and I don't think I will, but it's going to be the story of 2021 to keep on the theme. It's going to be the story of this year. We're just watching to see what happens. And, but I don't know if we're even going to know at the end of 2021, you know, if I don't know what their inventory is like, if they have a huge inventory of stuff, then they're going to sell through that before they do anything. Yeah. And, who knows what's going to happen, but it's definitely if I had to, uh, I know we were going to talk about some knives I was anticipating 21, but if I had to talk about a story I'm watching the most in 2021, it's obviously that it's like, what's going to happen with the cold steel, five empty spaces. And then something else. Cause like, I, I love that company. I love their products and I'm not feeling good. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, and it doesn't seem like there's anyone waiting in the wings to fill up that space. If they if if they were to uh, abandon the the uh, the giant burly tactical folder slash sword slash Viking axe space, uh, who would who would fill that in? Certainly not anyone yeah. I can think of right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that I know, um, I know that uh, Demko has said. I think he said it on on your show too he said it on my show so it's, it's not i'm not talking out of turn he would he would like to try and fill some of that space but obviously he's it's not going to be a big manufacturer he's not going to be able to fill the, the giant yeah. stuff like they had um i think spartan doing their taiwanese made stuff maybe they'll fill some of it um i have both of those here they are great um so yeah i think you're going to see you know spartans uh or the field grade line and mm -hmm. Uh, if Demco comes out with a more budgety kind of range. Um, but yeah, I don't see in the major manufacturers, you know, I don't think, I don't think Spyderco is going to change their lineup to try and fill some of those gaps. I don't think Benchmade sure as hell isn't. So um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with that. And, and, and I really, what upsets me is I really liked what Cold Steel was doing lately with the, um, like the Formax Scout, which is yeah. kind of a uh, it's one of my favorite knives that they've ever made i own one and um and i love it but i like that they took some of their knives who were frankly kind of stupid mm -hmm. you know like my voyager chris xl it's kind of dumb but they but those knives like the formax and like that the voyager something like that they used to be really expensive now they're 110 120 bucks yeah. and it was just really cool to to have to, they made them priced at impulse buy money and that's what a knife like that needs to be. And I really think they were nailing that. And I was very excited for the future. I liked being able to buy a stupid cold steel for a good amount of money where you could justify having it sit in your knife case and not use it because you didn't spend a lot of money on it. 
and now that now they got sold so well, that's that's a perfect way of putting it impulse buy money i mean that's that's what it is i mean occasionally you'll you'll have to yeah. think a little bit about your purchase and spend a little bit more but on the whole um you know if you think too much about what you're going to buy you're probably not going to buy it so it's probably priced the right way especially like something like the voyager chris all I, right I so usually, we, uh, i usually call it effort money but I don't yeah, say yeah, that. right. But you know, that's that's the more appropriate way to put it. <laughs> so here we are in 2021. 2020 is still warm. Um, let's talk a bit about what your standout knives, what your favorite knives from 2020 are. Um, you know, start wherever you will. Is, well, so I do um I did three categories this year. I used to only do two. Uh, I was kind of inspired by uh, Papa Nick. Uh, I call him it, Nick Shabazz. Uh, he, um, <laughs> he, because uh, in some ways he's all of our daddies. If you have a YouTube channel, it uh, reviews knives. But um, so he does three categories, and I, I, I kind of priced mine out the same as his. So I had a top ten for under a hundred dollars, top ten for a hundred to three hundred, which is kind of the wheelhouse for my channel. And the views on that those videos reflect that, that that was the top 10 video they got by far the most views. And then I did five over 500. And please don't ask me to name all of them right now because I'm not going to remember. Uh, but I did make sure I, I do have all the winners. Um, I didn't have all of them. That's why I do those videos like, you know, a screen record style. Right. But I do have all the winners. So um I mean, just to start out with the under 100, and we'll just go yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested in your under 100. Uh, I have a couple, and I'm curious if any of mine are on your your list here. So, my under 100 was one that just barely kind of squeaked in. And by the way, I, I do want to talk after this about stuff that might have made the list if I'd done the video two weeks later. I I think I recorded all of mine on December 10th or 11th. So for me, 2021 starts on December 10th or 11th. So if something didn't make it, it'll be in next year's. Uh, because I, one of my requirements is I have to have actually handled it. Hmm. Enough to have reviewed it, even if I haven't yet. I have to have it enough, long enough to have it. So one that squeaked in kind of towards the end and was uh, honestly pretty easy choice for Budget Knife of the Year. I remember I'm in an Instagram group with a bunch of other knife reviewers. And I got this. And I messaged everybody with a picture of it and said, well, that's choices made for knife of the year under 200, hundred bucks. So, um, but it's the, oh. it's the VV orders. So, um, I just, it, it's like 40 bucks, something like that. And nine CR 18, it's not D2. I'm not a huge fan of D2. That's what you, you have the dogma. Oh, very, this very is the dogma. All right. Yeah. There are th um, very some. Yeah, because it's yeah, they're extremely similar. This is basically shorter in nine CR, but I really like the nine CR. Um, it is uh, fancy plastic handles. It's just FRN, but you know what? It's it's got that feel of like the uh, and you'll know like the Ontario Rat FRN. Mm -hmm. It just it feels really nice, and I think that's one of the things that when people talk about the Ontario Rats about the quality feel of them. I think a lot of it is just because they do the FRN so well. And Civivi does FRN extremely well as also. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want plastic handles. Well, they don't they don't feel like it, you know, touch one. And I just I just love the that kind of clip pointy blade. I like the hollow grind. I liked it a little bit better than the dogmas, only just because I like the finish on the handle a little bit better and I like the size a little bit better. But the dogma the dogma was the dogma was going to be my choice until I got this. I love the jigging on the handle. It's sort of, uh, you know, like an old fashioned knife. And, and you know, I just, I love that aesthetic. And see, but that's, to me, and see, to me, that's that what I did. Is, that's what I didn't like about it. So, yeah, that's the thing I didn't like about that. Um, in, the, in the 100 to 300, it was quite honestly a bloodbath. And again, like uh, I've been spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time, like a lot of us reviewers were going back and forth, like, Oh my God, what are we going to like? I don't even know. There was so many good things. There's a quiet carry waypoint. It was fantastic, but barely under 300. It was like 295. There was, 
Oh, just so much stuff. It was a really hard choice, but eventually I know Shabazz and I agreed. I haven't watched anybody else's videos, but, uh, it was the, uh, the ProTech Malibu. Um, it's 200 bucks, 20 CV. And it's just a great little button lock. I have two of them now. This is the one I just got. I had the, because of the Warren Cliff or reverse hand. So I had the Warren Cliff. I got the reverse hand. So, and it's just, I, it's so nice. It's so light. It's the ergos are just about perfect. And it's a, it's a pro tech, you know, you know, it's very well made and made by extremely nice people, which doesn't yeah. hurt at all. I know you've had Dave on your show as well. Yeah. He's the smiliest, smiliest, most happy man on the planet. And Great you just guy. can't help but root for the guy. But, uh, also, I, they they seem to have this. really dialed in the uh, the flipper button lock on this one. I, um, I I have not handled it, and I actually have not handled any ProTech non-auto I'll, button locks. I know it's sad. It's I know I, I know. I, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send you one. I'm okay. gonna send you one of these. So happily, but um, but I do, my... I do know that it's been an evolution with the flipper and the button lock together. Yeah, it's it's hard to get that detent right, and um, they have, of course, the Mordax they did with Ferrum Forge and uh, Drop. And one thing that doesn't annoy me exactly, but every time I mention this, I everybody says, "How does it compare to the Mordax?" It, okay, they're both button lock flippers, but they are totally different knives. The Mordax is like a much heavier duty, like you know, beefy knife. This is an EDC kind of sized knife. They are not that similar. Uh, but going from the Mordax, which was great, uh, to the Malibu, they, yeah, they just dialed it in just a little bit more. And even in the second production run, this is of the new second production run that's just kind of hitting dealers right now. My other one, my Warncliffe black one was, uh, it, it's serial number like 88 of the first 500 or whatever, but it was the first one that left the factory. It's the first one that actually got put in the mail and it did have a bit of, button stick for a while and then it it went away this this doesn't have that it makes a button stick noise but you need a little bit of stick if it's completely free flowing it's you're going to wind up opening it in your pocket all the time so um but it's just it's this one is even better it like out of the box this one feels like my other one feels like having been broken in for six or seven months you need to wear in that coating on the black blade probably no, it's no, it's a black. It's it's a, it's a, a satin blade. It's, oh, oh, I it's got just you. a black black uh, aluminum. And actually, they don't do that satin coating anymore. Now, just the stone wash is is all you can get. Um, the satin coating on twenty CV, they realize that takes a minute. <laughs> so, uh, you know, because it's a really hard steel, it's a uh, hard yeah. to uh, to machine. So, so I'm I'm looking at that they blade shape. Stone wash, but. I'm looking at that blade shape and I'm wondering how that's not a Warncliffe or, or, or how, how the Warncliffe differs. I know this is a reverse Tanto and you know, Bob, I hate that term. Bob, it's, it's, your, it's your favorite. It's your favorite blade shape. It's the reverse Tanto. What are you talking about? You know, this blade shape, you know, it. you love it. I love it. I love it. Especially the terminology. I think we should change it right after the last show I was on with you and you, you, we were going, I, we were laughing at you for how much you hate the reverse tanto. I thought of a new, <laughs> of a new a name for it uh, that you should that you should refer to it as. It's just a techno sheep's foot. That's way more accurate. Techno <laughs> sheep's foot. I love it. <laughs> or steampunk sheep's foot if you want to be really derogatory. <laughs> So what what are some of the runners up in that category, especially the one hundred to three hundred? What are some of the other things that you were looking at there? Oh, the uh, let me let me grab one. Um, I honestly, it's been a while. I don't remember all of them, but of uh, the uh, Quiet Carry Waypoint, I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Um, it really just kind of uh, with all the the Vanex and everything, just really shocked everybody. Um, let me look at my own uh, my own page here. This is how much I remember things. I explain. I remember this why... was this was in second place. Explain why people went it's so just, nuts over that knife. Completely, completely, utterly stain, stainless. Vanex steel. You don't see much Vanex, which is a fantastic steel. Like in my opinion, it's the super of the super steels because it performs like M three ninety, and it will not. It will not rust. 
I had this and the uh, I did a one of my little battle to death videos between this and the Spidey Chef, and um, I did actually. It was the most stressful one of those videos I ever did because I actually put both of them in a salt bath Ooh. for six hours in a salt water bath. And I did the worst thing you can do is that I let them air dry overnight. Oh. Like I just took them out. Just both fine. Like not anything on. This is the one I did it with. Uh, but it was pretty nerve wracking. <laughs> but it's also just, it's got kind of a, um, I would say in pocket, it feels sort of like um, a 940. It's got that same sort of, you know, thin, but yet still fills your hand okay sort of shape. I really like the wire pocket clip. Um, I think mm -hmm. that was a great choice. It's very thin. Now they do a G10 version. So, because uh, this is a liner lock, it's not a frame lock, it's full titanium, right. so it looks like it. But the liner lock is actually made of LC200M. Oh, okay. so the, the same the, blade, even uh, the liner lock is completely the... like Spider Co yeah. uses. Yeah. Right. So, so every bit so... of steel in it. Is um, Carousing and then uh, oh, the other one I don't have at the moment, I mailed it out to somebody. Um, my third place was uh, the Hogue uh, Ritter Mini RSK. Let me ask you this How does Teravantium, the uh, dendritic cobalt alloy that they use in Terrain 360, mm -hmm. how does that fit in with uh, LC200N yeah. from the Spidey Chef and? the Vanex uh, of the waypoint. I, you know, I'm not really sure, honestly, I was more concentrating on the reading about the, um, uh, I mean, it should be, it's gotta be completely, it's not metal, so it can't <laughs> rust. Um, but I was more worried about the uh, edge retention and, and the, the crazy name that it sounds like something that, that Cobra commander would want to steal. <laughs> 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 yeah, I I like doing the Cobra Commander voice for that. It's one of the few good impressions that I can do. Hey, let me show you a couple of knives that stood out to me, kind of in this realm. Um, one of them I was using a lot uh, these past couple of days. This is the American Blade Works model number one. This is the version five. All right, he keeps tweaking. Michael Martin, the man behind oh, these man. knives, he just keeps tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and and. What I mean and, by that is making correct. Honestly, the the only reason that was not in my top ten, and I told him this was because he keeps changing it, and I just oh. didn't know which. Okay, if am I going to nominate the number five, and then by the time I do the video, a number six is going to be out? Like that's the only reason why it didn't go in my uh, my any of my top ten categories because it's an amazing knife. Absolutely, it really all is. the versions of it. I had a V3, I think. I think I got a V3. I've had an opportunity to check out the V3 and the V4, and I had the V5 all together. And I, I would have stopped with the V4, but, I mean, he just keeps going and, and you know, making corrections and uh, little tweaks. And when he sent this to me, he said, let me know what you think. And I'm sure he says that to everybody. And it, to me, that's pretty amazing to be able to take all that information assimilate it and uh and turn it into something you know real here's yeah, another one it, 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 his only his only flaw as a knife maker is that he reacts to our criticism too quickly <laughs> which is not something you can really be mad at all right this is the off-grid knives scorpion um designed by uh carrie orifice and then uh produced by we knives we knife Oh, man, I love this knife. Was and also it... was also very very close to being on my list. Um, I have the uh, it's not mine. I actually need to send it back to the guy who loaned it to me. I keep forgetting to. It's I have the all blackout one. But um, yeah, that is a knife that I think summarizes. And another knife it, that is in the same category that was in my under hundred list list was the uh, um, Cold Steel uh, Airlight. Um, that is a knife that is greater than some of its parts. Like it doesn't, it's not particularly compelling visually to me, um, but it's just a great freaking knife. Just 
is just very, very good ergonomically. It carries very well. Action is fantastic. The blade shape is great. It's just, yeah, it's greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah, that's a that's a great way of saying it because um, when I was saying it was that this is not necessarily something that I would pick out of a lineup and be like that one I yeah, must right? have. Yeah, right. Yeah, but if, I got if, you're, it if you're looking in a, if you're looking in a knife case, that's not the one you're gonna grab. Yeah, there is something about this knife that reminds me a lot of the um, SOCOM Elite. Uh, and, and when you feel them yeah, one in one that. hand and one in the other, they don't feel alike and they, they have different balances and everything about them is different, but still, I think something about the ergonomics is, is reminiscent and, uh, and yeah, this knife has been a see. nice surprise. Yeah. Good here's, choice. A, here's a good one. <laughs> the ridiculously large. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have mine right here too. I, it just sits on my desk. You, you know why it always sits on my desk? Not because I use it a lot. I don't have any knife cases that fits in, <laughs> nice. so that's why it sits here. But uh, um, yeah, this sits here on my desk, and then my Voyager XL sits by my bed because I don't have any other places to put them. Uh, but yeah, what a gloriously stupid thing this is! I so I love it. And but do you actually carry yours? Uh, no, I don't. But but it carries easily. I mean, it, it would carry nicely. I where but I you live. Can't, it can't. Yeah. It can't. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, it, it I think it actually carries very well. I I carry mine every now and then. Um, and it's just yeah, it's 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 pretty slim. I mean, yeah, it's one of those nothing else is going in that pocket, but. It's. I think we talked about that before the cameras came in. I don't remember, but um, yeah. It's a, nothing else is going in that pocket, but it's it's not bad. I don't. It doesn't. It's not particularly heavy, you know, compared to a lot of the stuff I carry. And it's fairly slim. Pocket clip's pretty decent. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind carrying it at all. I just can't where I live, but I would for sure because I mean it's so impressive. Just this giant Bowie knife, you know, flipping out. It's it's one it's a knife that you do have to carry a secondary with though because if you open that in the wrong company they're going to alert the church. <laughs> yeah. So what about your three hundred or your your someone over three hundred? Someone fetch the constabulary. He's opened a very large knife. Um. So uh, uh, my third place. I have to. I don't know why I didn't grab that one out. Um. Where are you? There it is. My uh, my third place one, or was it? Yeah, my third place one was the Spartan Harsey three point two five, because I adore the Spartan Harsey, and this is S forty five VN and a smaller version. But uh, what I said about it that I like, and it, it's not a unique thing to Spartan. I, some companies do it, but but what I really hate when a company screws up making a smaller version of a bigger knife is when they just shorten it. And don't change any other dimensions. They have all the time. They just make a shorter version. It doesn't look right. <laughs> a pair of three. Um, you know, but and they don't make the blade stock thinner. They don't do anything else. They just make it short. Uh, this is thinner blade stock. Significantly different handle when you put them side by side. They look visually similar, but they're not. And it's just a, a great knife. It works extremely well. And now they have the Talos, which is sort of a economy version of this um and it's just a really good size really good design it's a freaking spartan you know it's well made um pretty pricey for a knife this size undoubtedly but um i just really like it and then uh then i also had on that in my top three i had the hinder jurassic which i don't have one here but um i'm a hinder guy i'm gonna, I'm gonna find a hinder but uh, i really like the jurassic a lot i think it's actually um, I always tell people, you know, for your, it's just they only did one run of them, so that kind of hurt it too. But there's more coming, I know, um, in different blade shapes. But um, I hope I wasn't not supposed to say that. No, he said it somewhere else, so I can say it. Yeah, <laughs> Rick said there's more coming in other blade shapes. But um, uh, there, when people talk about getting your first hinder, I say XM18 Skinny or the Jurassic. Um, 
it's, it's a really good – they're much more edc than the XM18s or 24s, obviously. Uh, not the, I, I don't mind carrying an XM18 or even a 24, but I know a lot of people, you know, don't. I think a Jurassic three-and-a-quarter-inch blade, it's uh, just a little easier to carry. Ergos are fantastic. It's just a really cool knife. But um, – my winner, and and honestly, it wasn't close. Um, was the Demco eighty twenty? I mean, these things are just ridiculously good. And I know this is a knife that this and some of the TRMs I get accused of hyping or whatever. It's just that good. Like people will say, "Oh, you you YouTube guys just hype that eighty twenty. You know, if everyone says it's great, yeah, maybe it's just great. Like, yeah. You know, it's just, a, and I paid full boat for this, and I know everyone else who got an eighty twenty did as well, um, and I did not mind a bit doing it. You know, it's just that shark lock. That is a lot of people's uh, best year, uh, best knife of twenty twenty. Yeah, uh, and it, like I said, it honestly wasn't close in the over, in the over three hundred category. It was. Um, the, the 100 to 300 was tough to decide. I knew over 300 what it was going to be. It's just, it's also just such a split personality kind of knife because it's kind of a, it's a beefy sucker, but it's so fidgety. And you just rarely see those two things together, you know? Yeah. And it's just, uh, I just, I just love it. And I, I grab it all the time. It's one of those knives. If I see it, it's in my pocket. <laughs> you know, it's you, you know knives like that. If if it's just laid down on a table somewhere and you glance at it, whatever else is in your pocket, you're like, oh no, wait, I want to carry that, and you change them out. I I have to get me one. I don't have. One. I want to back up though. Uh, I, the Talos. Okay, so Spartan blades. I love Spartan. I fell in love with them this year. I got myself a Spartan Harzy. I love it. Want to get a Spartan Harzy dagger and a George uh, a George dagger and a bunch of stuff from Spartan. I love them. Tell me a little bit about their budget line and what you think of them. Is the Talos as good? Or, I mean, does it live up to the Spartan name? I mean, I think it's very nice. I will say, in, in interest of all honesty, I got both of mine, and they are both perfect. I have heard of some QC issues. Um, this is the first run they've made of these. They're made in Taiwan. Um, and I have heard of a couple QC issues. I have both this and the Aster? God, I hope mm -hmm. I'm getting the name of it right. I always yeah, forget it. The last George designed one. Um, so, yeah, so I have them both, and both of mine are absolutely perfect. Uh, Spartan didn't know they were going to me, so I don't mm -hmm. know if they picked a good one or not. But, um, uh, I, but as far as the design goes and the price and on mine, the execution, they're outstanding. This is, what, 145 I think it's 135 for the G10. Mm. This is the carbon fiber um, mm -hmm. one. And then uh, these are like one, 115, I want to say. So you were talking about Stasa before. His video of the uh, Talos, I believe he had a, a couple of issues. Um, but the yeah, thing that did, really I struck I didn't see the video. He, he, was, he just texted me, though. The thing that struck me about that was uh, the... the uh, the sharpening choil and how how they how they terminated the edge on this one in in a much better or a much more um, sharpening friendly way yeah. than say on the on yeah the that's yeah. I I did an uh, unboxing of these I haven't done the reviews yet I just did the unboxing of them. and I actually said like a little child I was like ooh it has a choil a sharpening choil it's because <laughs> it's not a Spartan thing they don't do that you know it's that's a yeah. And I was very happy to see. I mean, look at this, the 3.25. Yeah, there's uh, no sharpening choil. Like, that's just something you just accept that Spartan's not going to do that. So it was really cool that it's got a sharpening choil on it. And I believe the Les George does as well. Um, yeah, it's not it, not as awesome, but it's still there. It's still pretty decent. But, uh, um, yeah, it's, and this is the one I actually like the most of, of the budget ones. It's just, it's a good, beefy, solid feeling knife. And you can see it's, uh, it's a liner lock, but that is a pretty serious freaking liner on there. Yes. Unless George's and, designs uh, are just and then it's just one, And then it's one slab of 
carbon laminate G10 on the other side, kind of cold steel style. Um, and all these are on bronze washers. The action on them isn't, I mean, they both have really good detents. They're never going to be drop shutting. I mean, that's just not what you buy a, uh, a Spartan for. My full size Harsey is kind of drop shutty, but uh, they're more, they're more smooth in the way that a uh, Chris Reeve is than, you know, than a bench mate or something. So, so uh, a couple of, couple of knives that jumped out at me, um, well, first, actually, Jim, if you go to the knife cam, you'll see my, my, uh, my large and ridiculous knife purchases. <laughs> um, I, I love these for their, um, for their novelty and well, I mean, not just their novelty, they would make excellent weapons, but that doesn't really fit into my lifestyle. So for me, it's more of a collector's item, but I think that, that making a scout version, that means, uh, you know, GRN handles and uh, much less premium steel of the Formax was a great idea because it got this really that awesome was, knife in a lot of hands. That was in my top 10. Yeah, for sure. It was, uh, it's like, once I got one, cause I've always wanted to, I, I was exactly what they're aiming for. I've always been curious about a Formax, but not enough to spend 300 bucks on one. Right. And then when they came out with that, I just jumped on it and, and bought one. And then, I wound up buying a three hundred dollar one. Um, I wound up doing a giveaway with it, but uh, but I I I carry that thing so much more than I thought. I, I did a, I mentioned it in one of my um, I do those monthly videos and stuff. I carry the most. And the mm -hmm. first month of lockdown, when I didn't leave my house, I think I had that Formax in my pocket like at, at least at least a couple hours of every day because it's. It's so big and stupid, but it's like, I'm not leaving my house. I don't care. I'm just going to carry this big, giant, dumb knife around. And I was using it to, you know, open, you know, like uh, hot dog packages. And stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, just completely dumb stuff. I remember my wife laughed at me because I was wearing this um, old hoodie around, you know, because we're all stuck in our houses. And, you know, you're just basically in one step above pajamas if you're lucky. <laughs> and I was wearing uh, this this old hoodie, and the, the the sleeves were all getting frayed. And I wanted to go cut a string off, and I was just like, "Flack!" <laughs> she was like, "What are you doing?" And she like made me stop and went and got scissors to cut it off. But it was just, just like, yeah, civilizing the, the you, doesn't she? You can carry a Formax, though, people. Like, I think we should make a public service announcement that you can carry a, it's ten point two ounces. But as long as you your pants don't fall down, you can totally carry one. Oh yeah. Here's one one I want to show you one more standout before I ask you what you're looking forward to uh, in 2020. But this to me was an awesome knife. This is the Finch Runtley. Hilarious name. I love the name. It's an yeah. adverb. It's it is it is a very cool knife. I got to handle one for just a couple of days, so I didn't do a video on it. But um, yeah, it's something in the past around. I can't remember. I had to ship it out really quick, so I only had it for a couple of days. But that is a great little knife. Uh, this was my first knife in that pass around group, and I actually won it. So this is probably the one that you uh, you reviewed. Very that's, very cool knife. Uh, yeah, I like the bit of loom it. right here. I think that's neat. These guys are watchmakers, I guess. Also, oh, I never even noticed that. Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't we're know all, if we're all watch people. That, but... I was actually meaning to ask you what watch you're wearing because I keep noticing it. I don't know what it is. Oh, this is a it's a old Luminox my dad gave me. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, this thing. This t talk about take a licking and keep on ticking. Those and those I are like, cool. I've been tempted by one of those. I'm wearing the same kind of band, so. Oh yeah, this is a uh, NATO citizen, citizen Pro Master, but uh, yeah, I like uh, this is a stretchy NATO. It's one of those paratrooper or whatever thing. Man, uh, so I I am not going down the watch the watch road because that's devastating. No, don't I I, I have and it. it's not been fun. <laughs> so twenty twenty one, what what do we have coming up this year that you're excited about? Um, I'm excited to see what happens with those Spartans. Um. I, I have seen the 2021 Benchmade catalog. They have some cool stuff. Um, I'm not supposed to have seen it, so uh, I'm not going to say specifics. Nothing really like um, earth shattering, but some, uh, some smaller autos, which I think will be fun. Um, 
I have not seen anything yet from Spider Co. What they've got coming, uh, but uh, the the 2021 Knife of the Year stuff's already getting pretty hot and heavy. And I have one here that's going to be a contender, and I'm almost hesitant to show it because it's the brand that gets everyone loves, but gets a whole lot of hate. And us YouTubers that say good things about them get mad about it. Like I was just saying, you know, they say, "Oh, you just hype this brand," but um, they did send a few of us uh, the TRM Shadow. So this is not out yet. There's not even a release date for it yet. It's going to be early 2021. That's, that's all we know. Um, but it's the new River Lock, they call it. But it's, you know, it's, it's an Axis Lock. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it does have a heavier duty spring that you saw on the Axis Lock. And um, it's just. I think it looks really cool. It looks a lot like their nerd, but just bigger. Yeah. Um, but the G10 quality on it, I hope it comes across in the camera. Because when I did a little video about this, I did my little review of it. People were like, $280 for G10 and 20 CV? What are you talking about? If you saw this in person, the quality on these is mm. ridiculous. I mean, it looks pivot, really nicely contoured and. Shape. It's nicely contemporary. I mean, just look at like the, that the the pivot with that little starburst kind of logo on it. I don't think that's gonna yeah. come across all. Um the way the chamfering and stuff is on the lock mechanism, like it is they're comparing it to like, you know, oh, I can get a you know a whatever for that. It's, it's not the same as it's a product kind of production knife, but not really. And it looks yeah. this is what looks like a mid tech. It, it doesn't it feels like a mid tech, it doesn't feel like a production knife and that's more or less what it is but it's completely ambidextrous it's right hand left hand carry and of course this kind of lock you know is beautiful uh, blade the action on it is outstanding yeah the blade's great super slicey and but my favorite thing about it all that said is the ergos it is it's one of the most comfortable knives uh folding knives i've ever held it it reminds me of a manix too but better which is mm. pretty high praise for me because um, I have really long fingers. Like I've got pretty skinny fingers, but I have very long fingers and I hate it when my hands wrap all the way around a knife. And this is yeah, your fingers dig into perfect. your palm. You know, it's just, it's so, so comfortable. That pocket clip, you don't even know that it's there. It's just, I, I'm really enamored with this thing. And uh, it's it's not just because I like TRM. Marianne's a great, great person. But, um, yeah, it's not hype. It's just really, really good. What's the blade length on that? Uh, three and a 3.3, 3, I want to say. Main line. Yeah, three and a quarter, 3.3, 3, something like that. Um, not a full three and a half, but uh, it's just... It's just great. Perfect. I just I'm I'm totally enamored with this thing. It has uh, it, when I got it, it had significant lock stick, uh, but it's it's wearing out very quickly, um, and, and that's not uncommon to access locks. Like you've had held, held a lot of them too. Sometimes you just get that. You know, bench mate. Sometimes you just get they'd be sticky for a few days. You know. Yeah, um, and then they sort of wear but, themselves in. Yeah, uh, but also it's uh, Shabazz is going to be doing a disassembly video of it. And I already got to see it. And um, yeah, you the thumb studs come off. Or the lock bar studs. What the hell do you call these? These would be the thumb studs. I guess the lock studs. Uh, they come off. So it makes it so much easier to disassemble. Because um, they just have a Torx bit on there. So um, he he was he showed taking it apart. And like it's one access lock I'm not actually terrified to take apart. <laughs> I don't take apart my Benchmades unless I absolutely have to. Or my Hogs or anything else. Like... Um, they're ones that get, I do the uh, compressed air trick. Right, and flush them out. I don't, and... I don't like taking them apart. Yeah. Well, Brian, that's a thanks, nightmare. thanks for sharing that stuff. I, I have I have one more, and it's this. Uh, it's it's also from Mike Latham and Fox Knives. It's a gun stock, um, uh, what do you call it, slip oh, joint. Oh, yeah, I looked at that one the other day. Oh, maybe, maybe you and I were talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's uh, what a beauty, what a beauty. You got the crown spine, you've got that gorgeous shape, and uh, I love the blade shape. And something interesting here is uh, 
when you open it from from closed to the half stop it comes out really easily and then from the half stop to the fully open it's it's harder so it's 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 kind of a pleasing action and i'm not sure yeah. how they did it but i don't need to know how they did it it's just and that they can, did do it you can totally see why they call it a gun stock it looked that's what the handle looks like yeah it looks like an old cowboy gun stock or something yeah looks like a 30 30. So, I'm, I'm really excited to see what what he has coming out uh you know my traditional my traditional thing has not abated i'm still um, I'm still digging them, but now, now I'm coming back into the, uh, into the more modern realm. I definitely want to get that, uh, shoot knife, the STSAT, uh, by terrain 360. And I got a couple of others. I'm really, I'm really dying to get now that I'm coming back into a, into a more modern, uh, knife, I don't know, collecting realm. I feel like I'm coming what, back what that is, way. I mean, I'm going to ask a question. What is, is the terrain the one that you most want? in 2021 what's, what's your knife what's your knife goal right now 20 just one knife because we could sit here all night about all the stuff we want but just pick uh, ones what's one that you really want in 2021 i i would really like to wait are we talking custom or non or does it matter uh let's do non for the sake of people that so they will know what it is because you're gonna yeah. say custom and i'm not gonna know what it is okay. so i say for the sake of people i mean for the sake of me uh, don't say custom. Right now, I'm yes, I'm really, really, really wanting that terrain 360 STSAT. You know, based on the shoot knife by uh, Bob Loveless with the Teravantium blade and the and the little loom thumb stud. I mean, yeah, I've been thinking about that knife for it's for a, months now. So a, yeah, un unfortunately, mine was a loner, so I don't have one. But it is a very cool knife. Um, yeah, I, I mine had that video. Mine is not new, uh, but um, I've been, I've had a weird relationship with Chris Reeves. So I'm not really a giant Sabenza fan, but I love the Nkosi. Um, and, uh, but I, I think I'm going to need to get an Unum's on. I've never had one. I think uh, that's my first goal for 2021 as an Unum's on. Clip point or Artanto? Oh, I, um, I would normally say Tanto because that's usually what I choose, but my full size and cozy is Tanto. So I'd, I'd probably get the click point just to be, you know, different. Well, uh, Brian, we will be sure to check in with you uh, as 2020 progresses, no doubt. I want to find yeah. out what you've gotten and uh, I want to show off more of what I've gotten. Uh, thanks for coming on. And thanks for also, uh, like I said, you're, you're uh, one of, one of the few guys I look to, to really uh, find out what's out there, what's new. And, uh, Man, I love your channel, and uh, I appreciate you, man. So thanks so much for coming on the show. Well, th thank you very much. I always enjoy coming on your live show. I pop on uh, whenever I remember or that I'm not asleep. So, uh, yeah, I, I, your, your live show was a lot of fun. Ah, cool. Thank you. And tell everyone who's uh, been living in a dark place how they can catch up with you. Uh, YouTube.com slash Slicey Dicey, uh, Instagram Slicey Dicey 75 at gmail.com, and uh, uh, very, very shortly, uh, SliceyDaily.com. Right on. Oh, I can't wait to hear about that. More to come, sir. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. Anytime. <laughs> All right. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you've got questions or comments, call the 24-7 Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487. There he goes. It's always a pleasure talking with Brian Slicey Dicey. Uh, he's got an interesting take, great taste in knives. Also, he happens to be a comedian, so uh, that also adds to, to the fun in talking with him. Uh, but uh, looking forward to seeing if he gets that umnums on and also really excited to, to check out the, the new TRM. Uh, we'll have to get, uh, we'll have to get Marianne back on the show to, to find out more about that. Um, uh, I call it a clip point. Uh, maybe someone could look at that and call it a reverse tanto, but I'd have words with them. In any case, uh, this has been me. Welcome to 2021. I'm, I'm excited to see what the year brings. Uh, let's hope it's better than the last. I'm sure it will be. And uh, well, thank you all for listening. So, uh, well, this is Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer.
Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.